What's up, everyone? This is the Reseller Post Show without Chad. We kicked Chad off the show. But uh, me and Peter here today, Chad's uh, having some back issues. So we're going to hold it down and talk some reselling. So what's up, Pete? What you been up to? How's your week? What's up, guys? What's up, guys? Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Yeah, we're going to miss Chad. He's, uh, he's having some issues with his back, I guess. So he's not feeling good. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he'll recover quickly because uh, it's kind of awkward doing this without him, you know? It is his show, right? Yes, it is. It's always been on his channel. Occasionally it shows up on my channel, but for the most part, it's it's switched names a few different times over the years. And we've always had this me and him on it, or yeah, somewhat of a me and him on it. And then, yeah. And then, yeah. Well, I've been I've been with you guys doing this now for a couple yeah. years at least. Yeah, I forgot what it was called before that. Anybody remember what it was called before in the chat? But what's up, everybody? I hope he does good because he's been hurt now for like two weeks, and it's it's getting worse. I guess. Yeah. Poor thing. It's yeah. like a little little kid. Well, I know Kim will take care of him. Yes, sir. A lot of people already in the chat. What's up, guys? Drifty Treasure, Cosmic Drifter, Tennessee Picker, uh, Garage Flips, Brian the Oakbrook Picker. Hello, guys. Thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Um, we really don't have any kind of topic, right? We're just going to shoot it, go with the flow here. Yeah, we're just going to wing it. We just kind of wing it as well, usual. Sell us where to go. Yeah. So, hey, uh, good news. My uh, my account is back to normal. My suspension from eBay is finally over. Actually, the account kicked in last night. Um, and of course, kicks in last night. And what happens immediately within half an hour, I get another email from another scammer. <laughs> Same situation that put me put my account into the suspension. Just hilarious, you know. Um, <laughs> then again, I get another email today morning from another guy that wants to buy. It's, it's just a, like a motherboard for the computer. And first questions that he popped: Can I do this a local pickup? Can I pick it up from you? Where are you located? I'm like, oh my gosh, not again! Uh, I said, I'm sorry, sir, but this this is strictly for shipping only, no local pickup, and it's like a nineteen dollar item too, you know. And that's so. crazy. I mean, I was telling Chad there was some some guy bought a backpack from me last night, and I shipped it this morning. And I put it out there, and guy was like. Oh, I need that. I, I didn't order that backpack. I'm almost like, what do you mean? The mailman took it, so I had to track down our mailman. It's too bad he wasn't that far away, but it was like he didn't scan it in even yet. I was like, man, come on. And going back and forth, I guess supposedly he said he put his phone in his pocket after he was looking at it, and he must have bought it. I was like, you must have pressed like five buttons because it's not easy to buy something and pay for it <laughs> with like a mistake, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's like... The best, the best ones are, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, my kid bought it by accident, you know. Yeah, and then he was like, "Oh, I want to at least, uh, what was it? I'll, I'll at least pay for the shipping of it, so you're not out the shipping." And I'm like, "He did put his email address in the like, No, <laughs> <laughs> like, no, you're all set, sir. Nothing. I relisted that item right away." I was like, oh, eBay, don't get no game. <laughs> don't. But you know what? This algorithm right now that the eBay came up with, it's so touchy. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, you can't, you got to be really careful what you're writing in, that, in those emails, you know? I mean, which is crazy because, I mean, let's say, I, I don't know how this would work because every once in a while I get hit with a return. Somebody I want to return something. They don't know how to open a return to the automated returns. And I'll just be like, I'll just put my address and be like, oh, just ship it back. No problem. We'll take care of it. But that's so, fine. But that's, that's fine. You can do that as long as you already had a transaction completed with them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You yeah. know? So yeah. that's that's fine, I guess. 
Yeah, uh, I didn't think about that, but that's good. But still, you know, same thing. I think, you know, it's a similar alg algorithm that it's right now with YouTube as well. I mean, you as a creator, and, and, and I know a few people in the chat are creators too, it seems that it works the same way depending how you're going to word your title and the little spiders pick it up and your, you know, for example, your video is not good for all the viewers, right? They're not going to put advertising on your video. And you get that little icon, you know, not friendly for all the advertisement. And then you got to appeal. It's just crazy. I got two of those for uh, videos that we have in the Dominican Republic that I made. And one was the title, Do Not Kill Yourself Working All the Time or something like that. It's like, this title is not good or some, some type of thing like that. And I'm like, it's a video about me at the beach. And I'm looking at the, the title and I'm like killing. I'm like, oh, yeah, killing yourself. Okay, maybe. Touchy words, I guess. So I see Chad is talking in a, in a chat that he's got his uh, global shipping issue finally solved. That was like a $450 buy that he sent to Europe somewhere. I think it was France or something, a vacuum cleaner. Yeah, the guy used a different plug and blew. Yeah, the guy used different plug and blew the thing up. And I guess they ruled it in his favor. So good for Chad. I was at a yard sale today and I was thinking about that because there was a, a thing and it was like an uh, international laptop network adapter or something that had all these different plugs with it and I was like, huh. I thought maybe it was worth something. I scanned it and it was not worth anything. I was like, okay, throw it back in the pile. See, yeah, don't need that. But I tell you one interesting thing that I learned from this whole suspension that I had for the last seven days. Um, you know, I started listing since this account, I couldn't list anything, right? And nothing was selling on account. It was funny first because it was actually selling. The stuff was still selling on account for like another 15 hours or something. And they finally shut it down as well. But so I started listing on my other account, which has very small feedback comparing to the account, you know, my main account. You know, I mean, it's, 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 it's a feedback of 200 versus, you know, almost 6,000. So, um, and that account, I mainly sell just some clothing and vintage stuff and some LPs, you know, things like that. And when you all of a sudden start selling like high-end tools or high-end electronics and stuff, and stuff wasn't like selling like right <laughs> away. And I was like, you know, people are, I get, I guess, you know, they look at the items that you are selling and they'll be like, you know, what is this guy? I mean, all of a sudden he's selling here a few items of clothing and then all of a sudden a $1,500 tool and they don't like trust you. You know what I mean? So it was a good experience for me to see how that actually works and how important it is if you are, if you have a store in a certain niche and you start throwing different things in, you know? It's definitely interesting because like I started our second eBay, we had it for a while and we buy things from it if I remembered to go into that account to buy off of eBay, because I always do it from my own account, and then I'm wondering why people are shooting down my offer. People, you'll buy something real cheap on auction, they send you a message, oh, that was not supposed to be listed, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, you you know you should be selling me that, don't do that. You know, so I, I sell some things on the other, because it just doesn't make any sense to sell it with a bunch of clothing. Here's a sign, you know, or something. Here's a clock, and then people are like, what do you got that on there for? Yeah, exactly. And exactly. I was the person that always said, sell everything on one account. It doesn't matter, but I think it may, it may matter a little bit. Yeah, I, th I think it does. I mean, maybe not huge deal, but I, I, I think, you know, to some people, um, it might defer him not to buy it. So it was it was interesting to see. Um, you know, I still made some sales. I mean, not like I would do on my normal account. I still managed to do like three grand over that week on that account, but I probably lost seven, eight grand on the other account because of the suspension. So it did kind of suck. I mean, as soon as it was turned on today, you know, we listed quite a few newer things on it today and then relisted everything because pretty much everything ended 
because most of my um, most of my listings are either five or seven days so pretty much everything ended except maybe like 40 or 50 listings and uh, and immediately you know a huge difference I mean we had sales over two grand today so you know it, it does make a difference to have a good store with good feedback you know yeah, it does. I mean, I'm assuming it matters. I mean, one store. It's just weird how that works out like that. It's just, you know, more more visibility you can get, better prices for things, too, sometimes. Like, I noticed since I have a lot more feedback and I sell a lot more clothing, better pictures, measurements, and stuff like that, I may be able to get more money for certain pieces of clothing than somebody with 100 feedback or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Plus, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure you do get some repeat business too. I know it's not huge on eBay as far as repeat business, but if somebody brands their store, you know, enough, they'll get a lot of repeat business. And I'm sure you have, if somebody bought something nice from you, they're coming back to your store. Yeah, I've seen uh, somebody was saying here, should they get extra eBay accounts? They're paranoid their account will get suspended. If I'm, if I remember right, it doesn't matter how many accounts you have. They suspend them all, if I remember right. Anything under that IP address will get suspended, if I if I remember right. Yeah, and especially if it if it's over, because I believe you can have what up to five accounts under one name total. But if one gets suspended, they all get restricted, unless it's a totally different you know identity or, or totally different IP address. But so no that. They got that stuff figured out. Otherwise, people would be opening accounts left and right. You know, Amazon does it too. <laughs> I remember yeah. when I got suspended on Amazon. They suspended my wife's account like real fast. They're like, "Nope, you can't be selling on that account." Because I tried, and they were like, "I did." I thought I'd be slick because I we went to the warehouse, put in all different kind of stuff in there, and they caught that after like two days. They're like, "Nope." No. Yeah. They catch that <laughs> new computer, everything they caught it though. I was like, Oh, well, I'll wait for them to open my case again. Eventually, they did. So, well, hopefully, it won't happen anytime soon again to me, but you know, it, it is what it is. And I broke the rules, I guess, and got punished for it. So, I think we've all had our accounts suspended. I mean. Like suspended for I mean I had a, that stupid football jersey, and they restricted my uh, listing for seven days. I think it was. I could still sell things. I just couldn't relist anything that fell off, and I couldn't relist any new items, which I thought that was crazy, because I think that was my first offense. I mean, other than like four years ago trying to sell a med medical device that. I knew I shouldn't have sold them. I tried sneaking it through. They're like, oh, no. Brian, the Oak Brook picker, is asking me, Pete, have you ever bought out entire estate sale? Yes, a few times. And matter of fact, I'm super... Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, my good friend from Seattle, Washington. Um, so... Uh, what I was saying, oh, I'm super excited because tomorrow morning I'm going. It's probably about hour and 20 minute ride for me. I've been waiting for this for a couple weeks. Um, I'm going to look at a knife collection that the guy is selling because his family is moving him to the nursing home and he's been collecting for like 45 years and supposed to have over 300 knives. And there should be like all top of the line stuff. So I'm super excited to maybe make a deal with him tomorrow on that. So I and I know I won't be able to film because I already talked to him about it, and uh, he doesn't want to be on film. So, but I'm sure if I'll make a deal, I'll I'll show it. I'm excited to uh, to see what's there. That sounds like it will be fun. Was that the one you talked about in your video not too long ago? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, so right. that's happening tomorrow, and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, but I did bought out a couple of states completely uh, before. Well, it is kind of risky because 
it's a lot of stuff in every kind of niche that you can possibly think of and you gotta have a way to get the stuff unload you know how to unload all of it when you're only really playing with certain things that you want to sell so um would i recommend doing it would i do it again it all the it only takes few good items and that it's state you know a state sale to make a big difference and if you have a way and know enough people that you can unload all the other stuff then i would go for it almost every time yes sir we got a super chat from mr krillin i guess he he asked a question with his little super chat <laughs> Ronnie, how good are you with Montclair fakes? All the Montclair jackets I've ever got are fakes. You can actually go to the website, and there's somewhere on the website, I forgot exactly where it is, but there's a way to authenticate your um, item. There's a, a serial number on the, the tag, and you put it in there, and it'll tell you if it's fake or not. I wouldn't even know where to begin looking at uh, Montclair. I have no idea make really expensive jackets unfortunately what but we made money off the other jackets uh, here's one picker drink up just sold something he said well that's it my wife mad at me because I spent four hundred dollars for a whole bunch of jackets and some of the jackets were the fake Montclairs but we made money off of the other jackets in the lot so it was <laughs> But that's still never a good feeling, man. It's not. <laughs> Especially when you research fakes and you, you get there and you're like, oh, these are nice. And then all of a sudden you get home and you're like, hmm, they're all a little different. Krillin, Krillin is asking, does it cost you anything if you have to try to verify it on their website, I guess? No, it didn't. Um, I just sent someone there a few weeks back, probably a month ago maybe. I wouldn't be selling anything fake locally. I mean, technically, it's against the law to sell anything fake. So they still just they just sitting in my storage unit. Yeah. Where are they chilling? And it's funny, you know, because you see all that fake shit all the time at, at Goodwills or, or Savers or Salvation Army, and it doesn't seem like they care, you know? Well, they have all the all the purses. I mean, every, every uh, Louis Vuitton purse, I think I've seen that through. Yeah. Like, I always get it. You know, don't get excited, but I walk over there and look at it, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, that's never mind." Yeah, Lani Garage Flips was asking, "Was I putting everything in a draft as my account was suspended?" No, no, we were just listing everything uh, on on my other account. Um, so no, no drafts were made for that account, which is okay because we I want to build up my other account a little bit too. So. It's all good. Treasure Huntress. You can, it's on their website. I don't have it necessarily right in front of me, but it's somewhere on their website. Or if you just Google Montclair fake website or something, it should pop right up. I mean, it wasn't too hard to, uh, to find it when I was looking it up. But I believe it's on the website, and if you go in the bottom... In this fine print area, you can search it and find it. I'm sure you can bring it if you have a store in the area. If you know, if you're in a big metropolitan area, you can have a store. You can always bring it to the store. Have them verify it, right? I guess you could. I've never tried that. I've heard people try that. Well, I do that. I do that all the time with watches, high end watches. You know. Well, watches I think are a little bit more different. And and some of the places will charge you, some of them won't. It depends. Yeah, I guess it just depends on the, the brand, maybe. Yeah. And if you were really unsure about it. No, Chad, I did not go back and get the featherweight. I forgot all about it. I seen a featherweight sewing machine for 50 bucks, but I wasn't too positively sure on it so i passed on it i was going to go back and i forgot i have to speak in the chat because i knew oh. one recently you always grab those how much they wanted 50. Mm. they're still 
Well, it didn't have the. It had a plastic case, and I couldn't find any that had a a plastic case. They all have like a wood or some type of you know different case. I didn't see any wood, and it was a black one. It wasn't like one of the white ones that I know. I have to speak in the so for actually pretty piece of money. It was weird. It's just I don't know if it was in a different case or what. I didn't really inspect it all that much. Let me see something here. I keep losing my chat. What's going on? <laughs> What's up, Mr. Red Nickerson? Anybody have any questions in the chat? Just keep coming. Just post lines. Two, two, two. Anything. Fresh yeah. coast fine. Hi, how are you? What's up? I see a few new new names that I don't recognize. Interesting. That's a good thing, always. If yeah. your first time is here, say first time. Say. Or maybe work? maybe. It's Maybe it's just me. I don't pay attention, you know, to the chat enough that some of the names look new. When we, you guys, when it's you and chat, usually you guys do a lot of the talking, so I just chill out, hang out in the chat, and be like, "Hey, <laughs> let me take care of the chat." At least I'll be the wrench today. But usually the chat's fairly okay. There we go. Blending Fretwell first time, Swamp Picker hundred time. <laughs> and yeah, we, got, we got a nice super chat again for us again, Ronnie from Tennessee Picker. And it just disappeared on me, too. Okay, there it is. Ronnie, do you sell more than clothes on your account or do you have additional accounts for hard goods? I think he just missed our conversation. Yeah, I mean, I can give you the quick version of that. I almost sell everything under the one account, but I do sell like, um, Vintage advertising and stuff like that under the second account. I'm kind of trying to make that a niche account like this is clothing But I mean if I picked I picked up a few radios today They'll go on the regular account just because I got more feedback on it and I don't think it'll be that big of an issue. So just Throw them up there Yeah, I just picked up some killer uh, calculators today that we just listed them if you guys want to see really something that it's way up there, vintage, when it comes to calculators, type in right now on eBay, um, HP 15C scientific calculator. You're going to be kind of blown away what kind of money they bring in. So especially if you have an original manual, original box to go with it, crazy money. So I picked up two of them today for 25 bucks each with manuals and original covers. So pretty cool. Very nice. Uh, there was a question here about something. Oh, when you're on the fence about authenticating clothing, what's your next step, backup plan of action? I've never really had an issue with any like at the thrift store, if I think it's fake, I just leave it behind. You know, I don't even pick it up most of the time. I just leave it and move on from it. And I'm I've seen more than enough a lot of clothing. And that like a lot of um a lot of the estate sales that we go to around here, I've come very familiar with a lot of um like purses and stuff like that. Because they'll have like Louis Vuitton purses and so, so you get to see the construction. You get to see what they're supposed to look like a little bit more up close. I feel very comfortable with, like, buying a Louis Vuitton purse. But I feel better buying a Louis Vuitton purse than I probably would be a coach or, like, Dooley and Burke because I, I don't know anything about those. But if I, don't, if I think it's kind of shady, I just pass on by. Yeah. I mean, for the most part... If I feel that something is is not right and my gut is telling me, I'll just leave it alone, you know. I'll just leave it alone and pass it. So, oh, you want to grab that question? 
Yeah, I got to figure out how to open that chat. Oh, there it is. Okay. I seen you throwing a question there, and I could find the chat. All right. Uh, da, da, da. Just checking my reckoning solds, and I have a item coming back for undelivered address. How do you guys handle this issue? Um, I know for myself, if that ever happens, I usually contact the buyer. And depending, if it's something light, something cheap, I'll because I, I don't want the item back. I want the item sold. So, I mean, I'll contact them and talk it out with them and see what's going on. Maybe they put a different address. Maybe they had to sign for it and never signed for it. I don't know. Um, but most of the time I contact them and I'll resend that item as long as it's in the U.S. If it was, like, overseas, it's like, forget about it. But I think usually overseas stuff doesn't come back to you or, or shows up six months later, you know? I've had something show up. Not too long ago, it was like over a year ago. It was like, oh, cow. That's what, that's what I'm saying. So it's find the item in the, you know, I put in the, you know, I was trying to put in the guy's like name in the PayPal and see if anything would come up. And I was like, oh, well, I can't find it. Sorry. I'm just going to relist that though. <laughs> it was a Briody shirt. I sold it. It went to, went to Israel, I think. It, it sat around. You know, I never heard from the guy, never, nothing. Yeah. Lani, Lani from Garage Flips is asking me if I, uh, hold on, let me enter that. Um, he's asking, Pete, is your second eBay account attached to the same PayPal? I guess we should all definitely have two accounts, right? Uh, well, here's the situation. Uh, both accounts that I have are not affiliated with each other. One account is strictly under actually Adrian's name. That's my main account. And the second account is strictly under my business name. Um, it's a business account. And both accounts have two separate PayPal tied to them. So if that answers the question. See, when I had that PayPal issue a few years ago, when I had an issue, <clears throat> And they locked up my account for like six weeks. They told me I could only have, well, I did, maybe it's different because you two have a partnership, but I could only have one one eBay account. They actually made me close my personal PayPal account. That's okay. Really weird. You know, but it, it's probably different because, you know, the situation, since you do it from people's names, technically, it's not like me having one in my business name and then having one in my personal. No. Yeah. But we had another question. Da, 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 da. Uh, Ronnie, what is higher quality polo Ralph Lauren or Lauren by Ralph Lauren? I did a whole video about a year ago, probably on the breakdown of Ralph Lauren brands. It's a good video. It's probably somewhere in the backlog of videos I've done. It's actually a very good video, but Lauren by Ralph Lauren is kind of like the lowest Ralph Lauren brand. It's actually, if I remember right, licensed. Um, by Ralph Lauren to, uh, I forgot the company actually, Jones of New York or something like that maybe. It's not even actually, you know, made by them, I guess. And actually the Ralph by Ralph Lauren is actually licensed to Dillage department stores. So they're kind of on the lower end. Polo Ralph Lauren is actually, the men's line is actually pretty decent. But then they have higher end lines above that. Cool, cool. Uh, Blending Fretwell is asking us how long have you and me been selling on eBay? You can go first. Well, I had my first account open in '98 and really didn't get hardcore till about 2000 2001 um and then that account actually i lost in 2009 and so it's been yeah it's been i don't know 17 18 years selling you know 
a little bit off and on here and there, but quite quite long now. Yeah, I think for myself, I mean, I sold a lot of like, I was a big baseball card and autograph fan back in the in the '90s. So when eBay came around, I don't know exactly when it was, but I remember the first thing I sold on eBay was a Orlando Hernandez rookie card. So. 97 98 somewhere in there was probably when i started selling on ebay and i just i loved it for a while i thought it was like the coolest thing in the world you know for baseball cards selling buying you know because i i used to deal in a lot of cards and then graded cards came into effect no it was probably before that because i remember selling marco guy card when was the home run race 98 so 97 probably yeah i know Late, yeah, that was late 90s, so. So, I mean, off and on all years, and then I, I don't think I actually did it to resell until 2012, early 2012, when I've been full-time ever since 2000, the end of 2013, I've been full-time, so. Yeah, for me, like, really hardcore started about 2006, 2007 on ebay like oh you can really make money you know what i mean most of it before was you know a lot of local game so um and it did change a lot for sure since then it definitely changed i remember everything was auctions back then there was no buy it now nine ninety percent of items were auction and then you had a item it would show up on the front page yeah the whole taking a picture thing was <laughs> that was interesting you could sell item with no picture yeah the money orders and all that stuff i remember that oh, so it was like, interesting post a money order for baseball cards send yourself address stamped envelope and card holder <laughs> it was this whole like merrigan row for just trying to uh, sell stuff it was kind of crazy to think you know go to the bank with a bunch of money orders and checks but like, here you go for sure in a way it was a little bit wild wild west but in the same way you were not <laughs> you were not dealing with a bunch of scammers and people because people didn't know they they didn't figure out yet you know so you could left feedback for buyers too that I mean, for yep. yeah, if, yeah, or buy. You'd be like, this guy is a, <laughs> a jerk or something. It was bad. They give you bad feedback. You write them bad feedback. <laughs> Just out of spite. Oh boy. All right. Um, somebody's asking here, Ronnie. Do you mind telling the story about the jersey that got you in trouble with eBay? Yeah, I put up. Uh, I had a. It was a New England Patriots. It's a brand new jersey. Uh, Nike. I, I think it was a Nike football jersey. I, I don't remember exactly the brand because I sold it on local Facebook group, I think. Uh, it was Gronkowski Patriots tight end. And just into, like, you know, I had it up probably for eight, nine months at the time. And all of a sudden, along, eBay gives me a little, like, strike for it. They're like, okay, what's going on? You know, and I called them, and the sad part was they never gave me a specific answer to why it got um, took down. Like, did it get flagged by another buyer? They they were never specifically enough, and right around that time was when um, there was, like, a lot of websites and people talking about uh, certain NFL items getting flagged on eBay and stuff like that. So I don't know if it just – got caught up in that or what it was i believed it because when you ran the uh, ucv code it was a real jersey it would come up you know what i mean so i didn't really understand what it was all about yeah. but i'm always very in particular now when i pick up a jersey or something like that i look it over extra well easiest way to tell a fake jersey though would especially with its newer tags on the the tag it won't have the upc code they'll leave that blank that's usually a tall tail sign 
But uh, what's going on over here in the chat? I, I'm I'm trying to read here a couple questions, but uh, I don't know if they're questions for us. Are they talking to? Yeah, us? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. They're just so. So anyway, how is your listing and and, and overall going for the four Q? Are you ramp, ramping up? Are you trying to put more stuff out there, or what's going on? I've been listening like crazy and sourcing like crazy, but my sales have not um, have not changed so much. I kind of changed the way that we listed things a little bit, and I think that kind of slowed down my sales a little bit. I kind of went in there. I changed all a lot of the prices. I tried free shipping for a while. I really hated it, so I had charge back shipping. So I kind of just changed the whole store around like two weeks ago and since then it's kind of affected my sales a little bit i think i think it takes a little while for the for your once you change things like that to get back in the agorism and or whatever that word is called for the to get yeah. going again because i've been listing a lot i went from like 460 60 listings to probably 550 now and i'm probably going to have another 20, 30, 40 things to put up this weekend. So, and I got a lot of good quality stuff too. Somebody's asking, Ronnie, do you ever wash and dry clothes before you sell? I really don't. Occasionally things will get washed if we pick it up, but if something really looks dirty, I'm probably not buying it or unless it, or unless it's going to bring me a good return. Because either I'm going to waste my time washing it. A lot of the clothes we get, believe it or not, are dry cleans. They already got the dry cleaner tags on it and stuff like that. They look nicely pressed, and that's what I like things to look like. I don't like to buy things that look dirty and look like they need to be washed. Or if it's a suit or a, a, you know something, I, I, I'm going to have to pay to get it cleaned. I, I think technically, if we went back to the warehouse, I would maybe work out a thing with our um, a thrift uh, – not a thrift store. Work out with a – what do you call it? Um, dry cleaner that we have close to us that my wife knows the guy is Dominican and maybe see if we could get an overall like lower price and just laundry all our clothes through there. You know, but then again, not everybody wants things dry clean too. I thought about that or at least uh, maybe suits and sport coats or something like that. That yeah. way they wouldn't have to worry about that once they got it. Because I, yeah. I I would think that most people when they buy stuff if it's a shirt pants jeans whatever it might be first thing you do you throw them in a washer right you don't put them on that's the first thing I do I mean even new clothes I throw in the washer I don't I don't yeah I think I wear even new clothes I don't wear it most of the time unless it's like something I need and I just don't have the time to do it somebody I remember like half a year ago somebody was giving me shit on a video because I bought like a sweatshirt. And I put it on to try it out to fit me, and it was a little bit big, but I kind of stayed in that thing all day long when I was filming, and people were like, oh, how can you wear it without washing it? <laughs> so, uh, hey, I'm a trooper. I can handle it. <laughs> you know what? I was just thinking about it. It would be cool if you had an eBay store and you – you could somehow find a old dry cleaners place. That would be a great inventory system. You have in your little computer, you put in the number and the thing come around, take your thing off, be like, hey, I got that. That would be pretty cool. Or maybe put that in your listing, little video that everything is hanging in a dry cleaner and moves around and, you know. Uh, actually, you're... You see the people, there's certain people when I look up suits and sport coats, and I've thought about doing this, but I think the time is just not there, that they actually will film a little video and they upload it to YouTube and they've been embedded in the video showing, like, you know, certain things with the jackets. Yeah. But I noticed their sell-through rate on their jackets are usually not that good. So it's like, even though they included a video, they're not really doing that well. I'd be like, oh, if they were selling a lot of suits and sport coats, I'd be all over that trend. I'd be like, oh, well, that's one more thing we're doing, just suits and sport coats. Taking a video. But I, I could find that being like a pain in the butt to remember what video goes with what suit or something like that, you know? 
Or have you had a bunch of them that are similar and you're listing them all around the same time? Somebody's asking, Pete, have you had any problems with FedEx lately? My local ones stop taking stuff that is in two boxes put together. You know what? It's funny, and it's going to be actually on my next video. Um, for some reason, my local FedEx that I've been going to and dropping my packages for years, and I mean years, all of a sudden, everybody got changed there. All the employees, like, they came in, took everybody out, put them somewhere else, and they brought the whole new crew. And now they're asking me every single time what's in the boxes that I'm shipping. Like, they want to know specific what's in it, you know? Um, and they're weighing my boxes as well as I bring them in. You know, I used to just come in before, load them up on a card, bring them in by the counter, leave them, say hi, bye, and that's it. And now they want like all the details. So I don't know what's all going on with that. Nobody ever gave me any problems as far as like too big or two boxes put together or anything like that. But yeah, it's weird. On. Back to that question. Our local, it's like a Kinko's, I think, that we drop off packages at. And they've always asked, at least for the few years, if they see a box that's kind of like raked up together, they'll almost sometimes question the box. And I'm like, it's double packed, you know, whatever item I have in there, that's just, it's just there for its own protection. It's padded up. I even opened the box one time to show them and they were like, oh, and they let it pass. But I think they they don't like boxes being altered, FedEx. And UPS is kind of the same way because they altered some boxes for a UP, uh, for a, for Amazon shipment and they were kind of, you know, just weird giving you this whole you know what i mean like idea about it. and i'm like just ship the box don't worry about it no i just made it small that's all i did somebody's saying pete have them pick it up at your store you know what i i don't want to do that i actually don't mind i have my route almost every morning that i go to usps FedEx, Starbucks, bank, back to the store. That's my route every morning. I always got to go to the bank anyway. I don't mind hitting a coffee shop for some coffee. And everything is like literally a minute away from my shop too. So, Yeah, I guess they're saying in the chat that they don't have any issues. So interesting. Yeah. Here's one. Does the global shipping program open your packages before shipping? I would say 85% of them. Is open. <laughs> I don't think they handle every single one of them. Because I think that would be kind of, unless they have to, I don't know. But I don't think they do. Uh, but most of the time, they will, they'll repack them, right? They'll, they'll completely put it in a different box. That's what I've heard, but, you know, I'm not 100% sure if they do or not. You don't get – I don't think anybody really knows the answer. I've often been curious because when you send the item there, it gives you that second screen where it says, um, like, is this – where is this item manufactured? And I often wondered if you put unknown, do they open those packages open versus yeah. – you know? But I, I tell you one thing, what happened to me lately, and I was worried that it's actually going to come back to me. Um, we had a guitar listed. This was about two months ago. A guitar listed, and you're not supposed to ship any guitars overseas that they are made out of wood. Right? It's whatever. And somebody bought it from Finland, I think or Switzerland, uh, one of European countries. And I'm like, oh shoot, this is going to global shipping. And this was a nice guitar. This is this is like a $1,500 guitar, you know? Nice uh, older Gibson. So I'm like, oh crap, this is gonna come back from global shipping or 
they're gonna destroy it or do whatever you know I'll get paid they'll refund the money blah 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 but I guess what they it went through they never stopped it so I'm assuming they never opened the package um, because the guy gave me great feedback on it you know that's good I guess that's weird I mean just goes to show you that it's not 100% Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, rosewood and bugs. Yeah, they mainly worry about that we're gonna, you know, transmit some drugs over uh, overseas. Just like we had that problem a couple years ago with that uh, beetle. What was that Chinese beetle? Whatever that was, I can't remember. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't remember what the name of it was. It came from Asia or something. I can't remember what it was, but they were like cutting ton of trees here in Chicago, you know, because of it. Because the trees got infected, so. All right, I was checking something. Uh, back to the chat. There was a question. Where was the question? I don't know what they're talking about now. It's kind of. Oh, yeah. Ronnie, how much do you spend on sourcing a month to maintain your store? This is, I, I just looked it up just to see. I've spent so far this year only around $6,000. So that's approximately like seven fifty a month, I guess, right now. Six, seven hundred dollars But a lot of those months, like, Early on or in the middle when my mother-in-law was sick and stuff like that, there was times where I didn't even go out for the whole month, really, and sauce anything. So, you know, it just depends. Usually on average, I would say 500 to 1,000. just depends on how many times I go out or how many stores we go out to. Depends if we want to hit it hard or not. Yeah, you don't want to know how much I spend on inventory this year. You make a lot more too, so you got to make money, spend money. Yeah. Tell you the truth, I would have to. I don't have access at the moment to that computer, but uh, just in a shop, just to give you a general idea, we we spend on inventory anywhere between, on average, between twenty five to thirty five thousand a month. So we are in month 10, I don't know, quarter million. So and then the money. A little bit. But you got a store. You got to maintain. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a totally different ball game. Not that it just went out and <laughs> bought shit for, you know, I mean I <laughs> I got I got bills. I got employees. I got, you know, so just me and my wife over here. When I need money, all of a sudden I start to work a little bit. Man, it's coming up. Winter time. It's time to work a little harder. Yep, yep. Uh, hello, Mr. Hunter. How do you deal with a $1,000 return? I feel like a set. Okay, I'm not going to say that all the way here. Um, I think I just had a twenty-six hundred dollar return not too long ago. Yikes! What are you gonna do? You gotta well, take it. As long as you have the money there, I guess. I, I think that's part of the problem. Is you know, did they go and take that money out, or go and spend that money, and then realize they were getting a return? I mean, I had three returns in one day. I think me and Chad talked about this. Three returns in one day, like eight hundred dollars. It was like. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> but you know, keep rolling. It's like, what are you gonna do? I mean, listen, 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 guys. If somebody bought it once, they're gonna buy it again. I know it hurts, but give them the money back, get the item back, relist it. It is what it is. It's gonna happen. Here's one for you, Pete. Brian, the Oak Creek Pico was asking. Are you still going to do your travel series? We're meeting other resellers. You know what? I would love to do it. And I've been trying to. The summer was a little bit crazy. Uh, maybe I'm going to be able to do it a little bit now in the winter. 
Um, I do have probably about seven, eight people that contacted me and I'll kind of stayed in touch that, um, that eventually when I free up a little bit that I would love to do that, you know, and these are a little bit closer trips, trips that I can handle just, you know, driving four or five hour trips, you know, kind of one day thing. So I would love to do that. Yeah. So it's in the works. Look forward to seeing that. Uh, there's a question for me. How do you go about shipping signs? I do not ship large signs. That's for sure. Anything over like two and a half, three feet, I will not ship just because you get into too much time. Larger signs have to be crated a lot of the time. Like something like that, would I would have to crate to where I'd make a crate for it, you know, with plywood and two by fours and stuff like that, or two by two or. However, I haven't made one in a little while. But some of the smaller signs, usually just most of the time, I just bubble wrap the crap out of it and put them in a box if I can. Or sometimes, depending if we have foam board, I'll, I'll bubble wrap it and then put it in foam board and then tape the crap out of it and then even put it in cardboard. You know, but... Uh, just just slam the sticker on the back of it. I've put seen it in the mail. Do that before, and it does not do good. Foam board works well, but if you get the cheap foam board, it gets all brittle and everything like that. So, yeah, there's a question for both of us. Uh, do we both charge restocking fees? Quick answer: No. <laughs> I do not. I don't even buy from anybody. I see a restocking fee. I'm like, especially if they don't have measurements and something. I'm buying a piece of clothing. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, and, and listen, guys, the, the, you know, the return, I think right now there, my returns are like 1.6% on one account, and the other account it's like nothing, really. <laughs> and, and, and it's funny, too, because the, the account that has hardly any returns, that's the clothing account. So go figure, you know? Clothing, shoes, I have no returns on that account. So, Lucky. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, well, it's not like I have ton in that store, but still, you know. So, but overall, no, very small return. It doesn't bother me. Go with the flow, you know, just move on. What's your return rate on your big store? I think it's 1.6 or 1.7% right now. It's like under 2%. I'm curious now to see what I'm at. I'm usually right around like two, two and a half. I can say I have not checked it in an awful long time. But I don't even know where you check it anymore. Somebody's asking, Pete, are there Goodwills in Chicago? They are unsafe to go to. I am looking to make a trip there sometime. You know what? I believe in the city itself, there's only maybe a couple Goodwills. There's not that many. Uh, most of the goodwills are all in suburbs, um, so and all the suburbs are pretty decent. Uh, most of the goodwills, um, well, it depends. But you know, I, I hardly ever go to the south uh, of of the suburbs, so I'm not very familiar how the goodwills are there, but the West, Northwest, and North Suburbs, most of the Goodwills are pretty good. Yeah, we went to a bunch of stores when we were up in Chicago, and I didn't see anything. I mean, I don't know. I'm one of these people, I think, if as long as you're in, you're in daylight, I think you're fine. You know, unless it's a business. Like, things aren't going to happen. I, I wouldn't be worried yeah. about things all that much. And I, you know, it was places that we went into Boston, Syracuse, you know, Rochester, New York, the, even up upstate New York, certain areas run down and everything like that and shady, but still went to the stores, still found stuff. It would be a lot to chase me off of finding stuff. Uh, yep. 30 or 60 day returns? I do 60. I do 30. Hey, we disagree on something. Let's fight now. <laughs> yeah. 
I'll make a rant video later. I don't understand why Pete does 30 days. But I do change something recently that I do on eBay. I used to do quite a bit of listings for 30 days. And I'm not doing that anymore. Um, most of my listings, unless I do an auction, obvious, it's pretty obvious, right? Auction, five or seven or ten day auction. But um, if buy it now, all five and seven day listings. So I think, and lately I actually been doing few for five days, probably about 25%. Of five days and 75% of, of my listings are seven days and and they work pretty good I mean I, I don't like to be buried it seems like the 30 days were buried and my listings would disappear I mean they would be hot at the beginning then disappear and right before they would end they would pop up again you know so yeah it, it's kind of one of those odd interesting things because I've messed around with it and I've seen no real difference, but I've often wondered about trying it again. I haven't done it in a few years. Well, I see a big difference. From the 30 days to seven days, sticking with seven days, I see a big pop in my sales. I do. Uh, especially some of the stuff that I had for a while. For example, stuff that I had for seven months, let's say, or eight months, that wouldn't sell, but it was listed for 30 days. And then the same stuff we relisted for seven days, and it only took one or two relistings, and they boom, they sold. But they sat there for eight months, and it happened to quite a few items. So um, I don't know. It's working for me. I'm going to have to try that then. Maybe I'll try it. I'm going to go in there and rearrange all my listings again. Bad, Ronnie. Or I can just send them all and do seven days. <laughs> Well, you know, now, I think actually now, I don't know if it's a good time to try it out because everything's going to get a little kind of pop, you know, because we are going into that fourth quarter, so more people are shopping, so, but I don't know. I like it better. I've been doing it. I We started doing that back in March, and I see a big difference, so. <laughs> That's an interesting Nike boxes. Who has the name Nike boxes? Here's a real question. Who makes more money, Mr. Hart or Mr. Hunter? <laughs> uh, We're not going to get into that. <laughs> Pete does a lot more sales than I do. But Pete got a lot more overhead than I do. I just got a wife. And if I want her on videos again, I'm going to have to pay for her hair upkeep. Um, I don't mean repetitive, but I'm not. I was, yeah, I was just reading that. I don't even know if that's it. Oh. Uh, anyone who ever got any prolonged experience with OfferUp? You do OfferUp. I, I don't think I've ever tried listening to anything on OfferUp or. I have probably about <clears throat> between two to 300 listings on OfferUp. <laughs> An offer up any given day. It drives a ton of traffic to the store. It works very well. Um, easy to navigate. Uh, it works for me, but I guess it all depends on the area that you are located in. Because and there, I know there's some areas that offer up is not very popular, and there's some areas that it's very hot. So. Just like with the five mile or let go, I think five mile, like it's not really good in Chicagoland area. Uh, let go works pretty well and offer up works pretty well. I've never even heard of five mile. <laughs> yeah. So. I killed my knee today and I just moved <laughs> by my knee and it cracked. I'm like, ow. Chad. Chad says, I went to good till cancel, better sales since. Oh, Chad is. <laughs> Chad is being shady. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't listen to that guy. 
uh, Western New York sucks all around the board. <laughs> oh, poor upstate New York getting no love. Only thing I know is when I visit my parents near Cooperstown, there's one thrift store around them that's like a, what is it, SPCA one? It's real small. And then there's a Salvation Army like 10 miles away in Oneonta. To get to another thrift store, you literally have to drive over an hour. It's either Albany, Binghamton, or up to the Rome, Utica area. <laughs> it's like, you're done. You lived in that area for thrift stores, you would be crying. <laughs> and be like, what? Two thrift stores? That's it? Yeah. See, people are responding. You know, some apps work good in certain areas, and, 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 and in others, they don't work, you know? So... But I know for sure, like Craigslist is definitely dying, especially here in Chicago. Now, for us, I think that I mean it works for certain things. I think, you know, and in other things, it doesn't do well with. You know, it just depends on what it's for. I hate offer up a little bit, and I hate what's the other one? Lego. I don't know. No, one of them I don't like. I I don't know which one it is even though they're both very similar. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, the the Craigslist will still work good if you want to sell a car because people are used to it going to Craigslist a lot if you're looking for a car. But, like, for example, tools. When you used to log in to Chicago Craigslist to look for tools, you had thousands and thousands of postings. Now it's just like crap. There's hardly anything there, you know. So, uh, Craigslist is dying. Are you gonna change your name? <laughs> uh, I changed my name once. I changed it from Hearts Motor Company, which is not really the uh, the most con. Because I didn't think my videos were gonna get viewed. I didn't think they was ever gonna anything was ever gonna turn into what it did. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, okay. Talking about reselling on your names, Hearts Motor Company. It's just not really uh Yeah, but you but you still left the eBay store with that name though. Yeah, I never well our eBay store is named something else, but our account is that. So it's kind of oh, okay. Okay. So it just depends. I mean, what are you gonna do with you know? I used to sell a lot of cars back in the day. Then I ran into some issues with selling too many with without a dealer's license in one year, town got after my ass. And if I didn't know people in the town that used to come into the restaurant all the time, I would have been in some deep, probably trouble. Yeah, I had the same problem a few years back. Learn, learn my lesson. It's definitely a learning curve because I think uh, my brother ran into I think the same issue too, and he puts a bunch of cars in his name, his girlfriend's name, <laughs> who knows, whoever. He he probably does a lot of the no signing of the title deal, which is technically illegal. It's like uh, boy, try to cut the corners as much as you can, I guess. Mm. That's correct. I mean, um, somebody mentioned here that the Craigslist started charging in certain categories. That's why it drove some people away. That's that's absolutely correct, you know? Because now if you want to post in tools or something, you got to pay like $2 a posting, you know? Who wants to do that when you have apps that you can do for free, you know? Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting to know. Same thing for cars. I know they charge for sure for cars. I think if you do, I know they charge dealers. I think private party can still maybe do it for free. But if you're like a dealer, you know. Yeah, I don't think I haven't listed a car on Craigslist in quite a few years now. I think the last thing was stupid Eldorado that uh, I was cursing that car every day. Uh, that car drove me crazy. It was a good car, beautiful condition, low mileage, but. <laughs> it didn't. They couldn't figure out what the heat didn't want to work. Having a car that did, heat doesn't want to work in the winter time in New England sucks balls. Uh, and then the head gasket went eventually, probably because it didn't have enough heat. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, notorious for those North Star engines. All right, Ronnie. We've been on for a little bit over an hour. 
Are we uh, are we going? Are we what are we doing? Yeah, I'm good to go. <laughs> I'm good to go. No, it was fun, guys. Appreciate everybody coming out. Uh, hopefully, Chad will recover soon and will be back on a show with us. Um, and if you did enjoy today's show, please give it a little thumb up, thumb it up a little bit, and show some love over here. Yeah, I hope Chad comes back soon. I don't want to replace him. I have no <laughs> idea with who, but we'll replace you. Don't get back in. Like, you did pick a sec. Get a selfie stick, get your Wi-Fi, get your cell phone, make it happen. That's right. See you guys later. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel, Pete's channel, Chad's channel that's not here. See you guys later. Have a good day. Thanks, guys.